Family, trust, shop. The cornerstones of a program that helped Rutgers meet and rise up to the challenges of the year. Big Ten highlights and big plays. Adios, compadres! Caring for each other and the community through CHOP for Change. Thank you, Rutgers, are you? And hearing from those that know the program best. Peace of mind you get. The moms of some of Rutgers' finest. It's called the CHOP. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the Rutgers football story. Just such a great story of a team that's come from the ground and built themselves up. Not only in one football game, he's changed the culture for a college, a university, and a state. You can already sense the change in the attitude around the RU football program. Jubilation in Piscataway. He's done it before. He's built his team to believe. You have to respect Jersey. This campus is in a football frenzy. <laughs> And now to come back and be a member of the Big Ten Conference, it's incredible. Well, it's Scarlet Fever here in New Jersey. Racing for the biggest moment ever. An example, if you buy into a team, how much it can benefit you. Go, 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 go. Team takeoff, team takeoff, go, team takeoff. Rutgers football started 2020 on a high note. Excited for a new culture, family, trust, chop. In the great state of New Jersey! Together, Rutgers will be in the world! The Scarlet Knights were ready to leap out of the gate, attacking the offseason with a renewed vigor. But as quickly as everything took off, it slowed due to the impact of COVID-19. Chop through chaos. Keep going when the whole world's breaking loose around you. You're in an uncertain time, right? We are following breaking news. Big Ten football. Big Ten football. Coming back. Never is it more important to chop the moment. Stare at the spot on the tree. Don't worry about what's going on over here, over there. Family, trust, chop. That's how you're going to be. It's time to play some football. We are looking forward to watching your journey with this Rutgers team. But this year's journey would be different. Rutgers Nation was excited but had to watch from a distance. But bonds were strengthened as all sacrificed and played for each other. Hard work off the field turned into hard hits on it. It was quickly apparent this was not the Rutgers the Big Ten had come to know. They became a takeaway machine with seven in their opener and 19 for the year. Coach Smith had the defense matching the grit of the head coach. Rutgers leads the Big Ten in tackles for loss. And I tell you what, Rutgers, they're going to hit the field with some juice. With Greg Seattle at the head coach, they're going to come onto the field with like their hair is on fire. Submarine jacked on the blitz. Rutgers has held here on boards and one. Wow, what a, what a stop right there for the Scarlet Knights. Look at this Rutgers football team. Stop short at the 20 yard line. Unbelievable. Huge play right there. That's how you take respect. Down he goes. Botakowski's got him again. He came right up the gut and drilled him. Who lost yes. the football and was stripped away? Who's got it down at the one and Rutgers does? Intercepted. How about Rutgers? What Seattle's doing at Rutgers? They went out and beat Michigan State last week, created seven turnovers. It's not that the talent was different. It's the culture is changing. Greg Schiano knows how to get the best, how to extract the talent, the potential out of those players. And that's just a credit to the kids, the work they put in, and also to this coaching staff to get them in. What a story. Rutgers author. Defense just phenomenal. They forced 10 turnovers all last year. They forced seven in one game. Oh, let's check out your top plays from Friday night. Picked off by Christian Izian, and what an interception it was. One-handed. Excuse me, Odell Beckham Jr. That doesn't make Sports Center. I don't know what play should. 19 takeaways for the year, part of a renewed commitment that reached every corner of the program. Special teams lived up to their name. They were special. And their importance was highlighted inside the walls of the Hale Center and outside against the Big Ten. Has the distance. It is good. Puts Rutgers on top. To the applause of the head coach. Straight down the turnpike. Naylor fumbled the football. Yes. This is a much more disciplined and it's just a better football team. Preparing for an onside boot from Davidovitz. 
Oh, he takes that him. funny hop. It's there. Unbelievable. Let's go. Make a play, fellas. And he's going to run a fake across the 30, 35. Corsacs and a first down. Great call by Greg Schiano and his staff right there. Greg Schiano loves special teams. Coach loved the performance of these young men on and off the field. His team taking their life preparation to new heights. Some getting ready for success on Wall Street. Others ready for success in the NFL. 45 to the 50, Crookshank 40. Crookshank to the 30. Crookshank is gonna go! 100 yards! This is about belief. This is about knowing when you have the ball in your hand. You have to block for this guy. They believed in him. Unbelievable play. 35, 40, 45, 50. You shouldn't have tipped it to him because he's going to go down the sideline. 98 yards. And that is how you become the Big Ten return specialist of the year, folks. Good spiraling kick. He turns, throws it back across the field to Bo Milton. Milton to the 50. Cuts back to the 40. Milton's going to score. The second half, Rutgers has pulled every trick out of their bag. That might be the biggest one of the night, and it works to perfection. Oh, my goodness! An incredible play! Offensive coordinator Sean Gleason brought a brand new excitement, a blend of innovation and old-school power that kept defenses guessing all year. One minute they were running over people, the next minute they were running around them. Always unpredictable, it forced opposing coaches to spend extra time in the film room. Here a little reverse, Crookshank. Oh, he stayed on his feet. Down the sideline. Another trick play, how about this? Throwing it back to the left to the big man. Rutgers up 14-0. Everything's turning up scarlet in 2020. And it is big plays of plenty. This is something we haven't seen out of Rutgers for probably, I don't know, I don't know, 10 years. It's a reverse to Milton to the 40, 30. Milton down the sideline to the 20, to the 10. He's going to score the touchdown. I'll tell you what, Sean Gleason's calling a heck of a football game. Pushing, goal line, touchdown. Running, hit, driving, in. Oh, He's got a tie ball game. Unbelievable. How about the toughness, just the will. Turn it on the Jets, Rutgers touchdown. So Rutgers is going to go for two here. Can't go to the five, Yo. guys. For the pylon, did he get it? He did! What a great story so far. I never think you could argue they're the most improved team in the country. I think offensive coordinator Sean Gleason has confidence in his offense. Fourth and three, and he takes a shot deep. Was this the Kansas City Chiefs I'm watching or what? With all this motion <laughs> in the back. And it's caught! Touchdown! Breaks the tackle to the 20, to the 10. Adios, compadres! Melton up to the races, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10. Big bow comes up big. Bo Milton on the business end of the most amazing play you may ever see. Despite the unique challenges of the 2020 season, the Scarlet Knights made great strides to learn who they are and perhaps more important, who they can be. Their passion and love for the game and each other was always on full display. When I first uh, met Coach Shiano, I think he was just very honest. Coach did not sound like a salesman. He was very honest. He was very, you know, genuine. As time went on, we got to know him. He was the same, very nice, very respectful, very, you know, reassuring. Uh, Jeremy's gonna be okay. I also uh, felt that he was very caring, that he cared a lot about the guys. What really 
sold me was the fact that um, the ac academic staff. I felt confident that they would go there and get an education because I know they wanted to play football, but all football players don't go on to play in the NFL. He's a great teacher. He teaches you to, you know, work hard with uh, hard work with ethics on and off the field. And I just felt confident that if they went there, he would keep them focused and on point to finish the education and see what life holds next. There's trust and belief and accountability and living out one's expectations to try to be the best you can be in everything you do. For Devin and Jason going to Rutgers, they talk about the hard work, it was hard, but anything that you want that's gonna be good for you in life usually is hard. It's called the chop. <laughs> 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 and it wasn't just for him, it was for me. It was my, you know, really fun time going to all these cities, you know, hanging around with the parents in the hotel. We had, you know, fun the night before the game. So, and he was playing and they were putting records on the map at that time. Yeah. And they talk about all the great friends that they met that they still have till today that they met at Rutgers playing football. So I think it was a great time for the family. I don't think Eric could have gotten through all that he had to deal with without a lot of the lessons that he learned from Cochiano and from playing football at Rutgers. I mean, he learned mental toughness. That mental toughness was able to help him overcome whatever obstacles were thrown in his way. He learned how to fight and never give up, to Always, always give it 100%. I mean, and from from the therapy, through the, the injury, even to now, even to right now, he still has that mindset. He's not gonna let anything beat him. And I also think that they learned a lot, like being leaders, you know, how to be a leader at Rutgers. That's carried them on even into the NFL by all the hard work they do on the field, plus in the community. There's a saying that he still says to this very day when he talks to different groups, when he talks to kids, he gives them a definition that he learned at Rutgers and it's a definition mm -hmm. of success. And it's the peace of mind you get knowing you did everything you could to be the best you can be. No matter what it, it's at, whether it's on the football field, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in your home, no matter what you're doing, okay, you give it 100%. And that's one of the, the best lessons I think he, he learned at, at Rutgers and from Coach Ciano. He's going to be tough, but if you do everything you need to do, you will be successful at Rutgers and when you leave Rutgers. You know, he grew up, he grew up at Rutgers. You know, he went in as a, as a, as a boy and he came out as a young man. He's gonna prepare you for the next step in life, no matter what it's gonna be. I'm just glad that the lessons that he learned there stuck with him. I really, I really miss those days. It was a long time ago, but I still miss it, so. Chop for Change is doing great things. It's changing the world and the landscape of college football for sure. With close to two million New Jerseyans um, that filed for unemployment since March, um, since this pandemic really took place, we said, how can we, how can we help? How can we provide things that, that people need, these kids need? And staying warm is one of the things that, that that's a necessity. So instead of getting hand-me-down coats, we said, how, how can we be different? And we raised a large amount of money amongst the team and as a staff. Um, to provide 500 coats for the 10 elementary schools here in New Brunswick. Thank you, Rutgers. Thank you, Rutgers football. When it was first introduced to the players and our staff, everyone was fired up. Our players were excited to give, and it was an awesome deal to see how excited they were to make an impact and actually chop for change. Chop for change! Chop for change! Go, Rutgers! 
Coach Yano and his wife, Christy, actually matched what our team and our staff raised, which was phenomenal. Shot for Change is kind of like the start of the movement for Rutgers. And basically, we're just trying to get our message across. We just want to create a better world. It starts with people like us. The fact that they can actually be a part in making a change and Shot for Change, um, I think it fired them up even more. And all these kids who are going to school here in New Brunswick, they all know the art players. They know the guys they see when they watch them on TV. And I think that the same young men who they look up to and idolize are the same people giving back to help them. I think it's, um, it's significant and it's huge. And that's just the first step to what we're doing and how we're going to impact our local community. Thank you, Rutgers. Thank you, Rutgers. Are you? You know, they certainly tried. I'm really, really proud of them. I think about, you know, I think about this week coming off that Maryland game as beat up as we were. They really, really tried. And for a while, we were able to to hang in there. And then, you know, a lot of guys started going down and missing and different combinations. And I'm really, really proud of them. It's, uh, we're one of two teams in our league that played every game. And, you know, every single day we talked about it, our number one opponent was COVID. And if we were able to defeat our number one comp opponent as a program, that we would have the opportunity to get better. And you get better in practice, but you also get better in live competition and games. And we were able to improve. So we won some, we lost some, but we got better. And a lot of guys got valuable experience that moving forward is gonna be very beneficial. I wish we could have won tonight. You know, there's some guys that this was their last game. And I really, really wanted to win. But I also knew how hard it was going to be. And then we had a chance. You know, we, we, we had a chance and just couldn't quite finish the job. Family on three, one, two, three. Family. It's one of the constants every time Rutgers took the field through this uncertain year. A building block of the program, along with trust and the chop. Each week, those core values help the young men in Coach Ciano's care prepare and rise to the challenge of each Big Ten opponent. And facing off against Nebraska for the final game of the season was no different. A good tackle that time by Trey Avery. He's going to lose two. Tyshawn Fogg right there to bring him down. Lost the football late. Who gets flipped upside down and lost the football. And Rutgers picks it up. Big Bo comes up big right out of the game. I love the play call. Be aggressive. But a nice start to this game so far for Rutgers. Straight down the turnpike. Rutgers takes a 3 0 lead. The Scarlet Knights attacked each snap as if it were the first game of the season. No one sat back. Fumbles the football again, and Rutgers has it. How about Rutgers attacking the football all year long? Victories in the Big Ten have to be earned through a total team effort in all three phases. And while Rutgers' special teams may be overshadowed at times by the takeaways of the defense and the inventive play calling on the offense, they were winning the battle of field position. And the first six points of the game belonged to the Scarlet Knights. But it would not be enough. The defense hounded the Huskers, but after forcing a fourth and goal situation, Nebraska got on the scoreboard and took a one-point lead. It looked like they would build on that, but Coach Smith's defense rose up. Martinez fires, end zone, and it is intercepted Whoa. by Christian Isian with one hand in the end zone. How did he catch that football? What an interception. Christian Isian with his third interception in the last three weeks. The offense was eager to match the top 10 play efforts of their brothers on defense. Through lineup changes from the season's early weeks, the effort never wavered, no matter the down. Fourth down and one, takes a snap, Pacheco up the middle, first down and more, oh. breaks the tackle to the 20, to the 10, adios compadres, touchdown Rutgers! Now Rutgers will try to make this a seven point lead. Bone Melton, 14 to seven, Scarlet Knights. By believing in themselves and each other, they were creating their own luck and opportunities to win. Though the first half belonged to Rutgers, Nebraska would once again take the lead, and it was up to the Scarlet Knights to respond. 
While the offense was eager for the challenge, so too were the guys on special teams. It will be Aaron Crookshank from the Rutgers 2. Crookshank out across the 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. You shouldn't have kicked it to him because he's going to go down the sideline. 98 yards. He already has three of these in his career. Make it four. And that is how you become the Utah Return Specialist of the Year, folks. Things are different at SHI Stadium. Rutgers made their opponents pay for visiting, notching their fourth turnover of the night and 19th of the season. They worked tirelessly to end their year with a win. All 11 men utilizing lessons learned on every snap. They stumbled in the fourth quarter, but never stopped rising up to chop again. At Rutgers, drive is in our nature. It's in our roots. Because we're the doers, the self-starters, the forward thinkers. Now is when we thrive. Together is how we grow. This is Rutgers, where your success grows the world. It's awesome to see how far we've come and just to keep it going to next year. There's so much more we can improve on and so much more we can get better at. You know, Coach Gleason talks about it all the time. Just keep getting better at the foundational stuff and just we're, we're, we're this close to being where we want to get to. So we just got to keep going and keep going. Yeah, I, I was very, very pleased uh, with our special team. Certainly, you know, our, our punt team led by Adam was phenomenal. Billy snapped it really well. Madalema, great block. And Adam Korsak with all kinds of space. The left gunner did a great job with the outside release. And this kid does it all. You know, was able to get uh, to, the, to the yard marker and get out of bounds. All credit to the coaches and, and the guys on the punt team. Yet again, executing their jobs, so really grateful for them. I don't know that I've ever heard a coach speak as glowingly about a punter as Greg Sciano did about Adam Corsett. He loves that young man. He? I love every single guy on the team, so for them to vote me a captain is obviously a tremendous honor, and I'm going to try my best each and every day to, to be a good leader. I think I played my best season this year, and but one of the main things I've taken away from Coach Sciano and his staff is how to be a better man and how to be a better person in society in general. And, you know, the things I've learned from him in one year are things that I'm going to carry with me the rest of my life. What Coach Shano has done for this program and for our, for our teammates and what these coaches have done to us is just another step in the right direction for what the future has to hold for Rutgers football. And not only Rutgers football, but the state of New Jersey. You know, that just excites me to come back next year and see what we can really do. And we left it all out on the field, and I'm just so excited to get back here and to uh, keep building this thing and see where it goes.